What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Limitless Business Owners Podcast. My name is Andrew Georgie, and I'm here with my co-host of the podcast, Dan Fisher. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, first of all, we want to welcome you. Okay, We're super excited to be on this journey, this business owner journey with you, and help you along the way. Okay, Our whole goal with this podcast, and really our passion in life, is to bring the everyday business owner content and stories they can relate to, and also fresh new perspectives, fresh new mindsets, new thoughts, new ideas, strategies, tactics to help you grow your business. Okay, If you take one thing out of each episode and start implementing it into your life and business today, we promise you're going to start seeing massive growth. Let's hop into the show. Yo, what's up, guys? Another week of Limitless Business Owners Podcast. And we have, I, I hate to say, he's, he's not a guest. He's new to you guys, not new to us. Um, his name is CJ. CJ is going to be joining our internal team here at Limitless. And we're launching a whole new group. Uh, I would say a relaunch of a whole new group. And CJ has been a huge part of that. So CJ, welcome to the show. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Dan. I'm so happy to be on the first podcast here with you guys. Excited to uh, be not a, a guest, but ongoing member and ongoing uh, podcaster. So it's going to be great. Yeah, CJ, uh, he does a lot of business consulting. He's owned his own businesses. Uh, very smart and savvy dude. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I always enjoy my conversations with him. One of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. And I know I'd love to pop down to Atlanta. You're in the Atlanta, uh, near the Atlanta area, you know, yeah. so I'd love to pop down and, uh, Actually, meet in person. It's funny because we have all these digital relationships, but it's some of the people that we talk to the most. Yeah, it's it true. really is. It really is. You know, it's uh, this whole new Zoom world that uh, I've been, you know, this year immersed into, and a lot of us uh, have. And it's it's pretty fantastic to be able to connect on the level that we've connected on, and mm-hmm. to develop relationships like we have over a computer <laughs> and yeah. a phone. It's pretty, it's <laughs> Crazy. pretty wild. It's like, did they think like 40 years ago we'd be here? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, I think about that stuff. It's, they didn't yeah. think 20 years ago. I, it makes me wonder like what's, okay, that's not a lot of time. What's 20 years from now look like? You know? That's weird. Good crazy. Point. That's a good point. I had a brief conversation. I won't digress too much, but I was having dinner with a friend last night and uh, he's got a, a kid in high school. And he, I was like, man, what? What's your son going to, his world going to be like when he's 35, when he's 45? Is he just going to walk at home and his, his doors are going to unlock? <laughs> his key fob's going to, like, like we walk, like we walk to our cars now, and our doors unlock, lights come on. Yep. Like, yeah, why not? It's going to be an interesting future in 20 years from now. It really is. A lot of opportunity. A lot of opportunity, that's for sure. So CJ, tell yes. us a little bit about your 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 background a little bit. I I know we know it. I want the listeners to know because you're going to be a, a regular on the podcast, kind of moving forward. Um, and you know, I know our listeners would love to kind of hear more about you, your background. Don't have to go in too much, but you know, a little bit about you. Sure, definitely. So I've uh, definitely been an entrepreneur, business owner for about twelve years now. My journey really started uh, with music. I wanted to be a professional drummer, professional musician, moved to Atlanta in pursuit of that. And that just led me to really where I'm at now. Uh, with my first business partner we met, he was a guitar player in the band, I was a drummer. Uh, I had started my first business uh, back in the end of 2012, beginning of 2013, after doing some music, after working in the restaurant world, uh, being becoming a sous chef in a really quick amount of time learning a lot about just business and operations. And that's like been my forte with all my companies, is systems, processes, people, operations, really just figuring it out. And then over, you know, the past, you know, 10 years now of inundating myself in that, I'm at the point now where I was like, man, it would be great to help others. Like throughout my journey, I just had figured it out, put my head down, Never hired a coach or consultant. I just figured things out. Didn't go to college and get an MBA. So I was like, it'd be great to help other business owners and entrepreneurs <laughs> to go through the hurdles easier, easier or over the hurdles or avoid all of it together. 
So that led me to now with what I do as a consultant and advisor. And I still have businesses I'm I'm involved in and help manage and run. But my main focus now is consulting, advising, connecting with business owners and helping them out as much as possible. So there's a lot of uh, ups and downs in my story in my past 10, 12 years of the entrepreneurial roller coaster ride. So uh, with that, you know, we can certainly talk more on other podcasts about the ups and downs and <laughs> hurricanes and everything, which is always fun to talk about. But that's kind of a brief uh, you know, background on me. It's kind of awesome that you play the drums. I play guitar. Yeah, so it, Dan, man, what and I also play drums. Instrument? You yeah. play drums? Uh, I, I, yep. Okay. Yeah, two drummers and a guitarist. I used to yeah. play drums. And then this Did is you? probably like middle, like middle school. I didn't know in, that. In jazz band, I had a drum set. Yeah, then high school, I just played baseball, and then I learned the guitar afterwards. Well, together we're the Blue Man Group, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I have to send you some old files. I just sent a uh, a new client. Yeah, he's a, a musician to a singer songwriter, and uh, I sent him some old files of a uh, band I was in. So I have to email those to you guys. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And you know, it's funny. I mean, you're you're a consultant now. And I think, you know, consulting is in coaching. It's become so popular um, over the last, gosh, three, four, five years. Um, mm-hmm. But you really can avoid a lot of hurdles that, you know, what might sound like a lot of money to pay a coach or consultant, they actually save you that money in mistakes. Uh, and right. you learn it a lot faster. You know, I, I think we can all agree that if we had a coach or consultant that we could probably pay even a few grand to that could speed up our journey. We would want to do that to avoid the potholes um, and, you know, reach new levels faster. And I think that's the tough thing for people to comprehend. And it's kind of a faith leap, too, when they hire a, a consultant, right? It's, Absolutely. You know, um, you know, there is typically always proven results, right? But it just doesn't always work. It really is dependent on the client's work ethic, too. And do they implement what you say? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like going to a a fitness coach and them telling you, just, you know, do this or do that. And you just eat donuts. Uh, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see the results. You can't go blame the co- coach afterwards. Right. 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 Well, yeah, awesome. you're absolutely right. You know, there's a lot of, uh, items that I see with the business owners that I connect with on a weekly basis. And, um, a lot of times it's all over the place. And for me, in the the mindset that I go into a meeting with a, a new business owner that I just met or is a complete stranger is like, hey, I got to build a, re- we have to build a relationship together. Yep. And then establish that trust and say, okay, here are some items that we can work on together and show you that and quantify the ROI because mm-hmm. you're right, you know, it's an expenditure and it's like, hey, if you can't afford it, that's fine. But what can we do to get you there too? So yeah. that we can hit these items and really tackle it in your business and make you more profitable, successful, uh, whatever your goals are, get you there quicker. So Absolutely. You know, I, I think of, and I, I know we have a topic today we'll get to, but, mm-hmm. you know, I think of the coaching consulting world. Uh, it's a tool in business owners' tool belts, right? And, uh, you know, a lot of business owners, they, uh, I don't want to say they're prideful. They're just like, we typically are like, hey, we'll just figure it out ourselves type of people, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's very wise to get help. Like that's just, a, a, you know, it's, it's um, that's a, a maturity, a, a marker of maturity is if you're asking for help and you have mentors or you have coaches, you have people keeping you in check um, and, and helping you, that is a sign of wisdom and maturity, you know? And, yeah. um, I think, yeah. uh, you know, we, we wear this badge of honor, like, Hey, I'll figure it out myself. Well, it takes you 10 years. It's like, dude, you could have just hired someone <laughs> to help coach yep. you and you could have done it in two years, <clears throat> you know? Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a great topic to add to a podcast. When do I get help? What's the right time? When's that yeah. next level up to where, okay, how, can I get a coach? Can I get a consultant? Can I get that advisor? Can I yeah. get somebody to help? Can I get that mentor? That, yeah. that would be a great topic. And, and yeah, you know, they say yeah. that uh, investments in the business, you know, are the produce the most ROI in anything. Yeah. Whether you compare it to stocks or um, any other investment that you, you would do, if you invest in your business, you're you're basically guaranteed to get more out of it than you would in anything else. Absolutely. And, yeah. and our the, the business owners' eyes, they typically always look at like direct ROI. So they look at something like Facebook ads, or they look at 
Right. Hey, how much am I paying this person? And am I getting an ROI back in a month? It's like some, mm-hmm. sometimes the best ROIs don't come back until three, four, five, six months down the road, sometimes even later. And this goes back to our conversation last week, Dan, about consistency. It's that instant gratification. We want results right now and tomorrow. Right. Um, and sometimes ROI takes a little bit, you know? So ROI if you're working, could be time too. Absolutely. It's more important than money. It is. Yeah, that's exactly. one that's thing. The best, that's that, the best one. Yeah, that's one thing I see is the time. You know, business owners that have been doing the same thing for 15, 17 years, and they're like, yeah, I'm just spinning around like a, a Tasmanian devil, which is the. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about know? that, yeah. Yeah, we talked about it. I, I love that, that term, you know, like, yeah, as a business owner, we get in those grooves, we're just spinning, going out of control. We don't know kind of where to go. And yeah, you don't, you don't want that forever. You want no. to spend time with your family, with your friends. Oh, yeah, I can afford a boat. Because I, I'm, you know, successful financially in my business. Well, that's great. But when can you go on the boat with your family and enjoy yeah. that time? So, yep. You know, and, and getting and, kind of, you know, getting into the, our our topic of, of yeah. delegation and saying, yep. hey, how can we get that time? How can we work on this stuff? You know, as a team. So, it's yeah, it's that. Um, it, it's it's the search for less stress. It's the search for. Um, less chaos you know and there's always gonna be mo like there's there's gonna be moments when you're a business owner, there's gonna be moments of chaos that you can't avoid right but how do we minimize that right how do we make uh or how do we maximize your freedom and you know people think of business ownership as more freedom and sometimes that's not the case sometimes it's the sh- that could be that could shackle you too you know mm-hmm. uh, sometimes even more than just working a job yes you know so you have to take the right steps, and that's our topic today. Like CJ said, it's delegation. You know, uh, CJ, how many business owners do you see? And you, I know you talk to a lot that they have this sense of control and they don't want to delegate, and they never can grow because of that. Yeah, uh, you know, percentage wise, it's probably seventy, eighty percent that are like that that I that I see, maybe even almost 90%, but yeah. safely, you know, 75% or so of business owners that are, that are like that, whether it's, you know, a, a team of husband, wife, couple, or two mm-hmm. to five employees or 10, like, yeah, it, they put a lot on themselves. And we do that as business owners and entrepreneurs, you know, we have that mindset. Most of us, I know for me is like, it's going to be my way. I'm going to do it right. I, you know, don't need to spend, you know, four hours showing somebody how to do this 10 minute task. Um, I'm just going to do it myself. Mm-hmm. So and a lot of us entrepreneurs have that mindset and it's not always the best. Yeah. Yeah. I know some of the business owners that I used to work for, um, which, which was part of my learning journey, right? I worked typically right underneath them. It was a great time to, uh, to learn, but uh, a lot of them were like that. They they had control issues, and I say that nice. And it's, it's you know it's because it's your baby. It's like you grew it from nothing, and you put all this time. Like you have so much invested that you, it's hard to sometimes dish something off to somebody else and trust them with the results of that. That's tough, you know. So we're not saying delegation is easy by any means. No, um, it's it's well, not. It, you know, I was actually in a meeting yesterday talking specifically about this with the client and it's it is tough it is tough and and it takes work it takes more time but you you know we live in the world of urgency like has to get done now we i have to do it now you have to do it now i don't have time to train you to do this 5 10 minute 15 minute 20 30 minute task because it's going to take a little bit more time and effort and energy to train and to get somebody do it exactly the way you want to do it. Yep. So if you can see past that and see, okay, what's it going to be like in three months, six months, a year, 10 years, how is this going to affect the long term, not yep. just the short term? Yeah. And, and it's like thinking on that, you know, I was trying to break down. Um, I always try scoping in, you know, why is it hard? Well, it's hard to trust people. You know, why, what, like, what's the root of the trust? Well, we're, we're afraid that the time we're putting to train them they're still going to make a mistake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we run away. I think at a certain point, business owners run away from mistakes 
And we all know that that it doesn't lead to progress. Like you have to make mistakes to make progress. So, you know, by you taking that little bit extra time, which we know is tough to find as a business owner, by taking that extra time, um, even though you taught someone and they make a mistake and that I know might lose a client or, you know, it, there could be bad things that happen from that. Yes. But on the back side of that, if you can see past the mistakes and if that employee starts to learn it, do it well, you just grew. Right there, yep. you just grew, you know. Um, Big time. Yeah, absolutely. And I know, you know I hated – uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> go <laughs> ahead, Dan. Go ahead. Um, I know I had um, issues delegating because I didn't want to put that uh, that job or almost felt like nominal to me. I didn't want to put that like terrible job onto someone because I hated it. But I, So I kept hating it and then didn't realize that it was – you know, once I did do it and, and allowed them to take that job from me, they actually didn't mind it. And they are actually better than it, better at it than I was. Um, so it was like a, a feeling of me protecting my team. But ultimately, you know, they wanted that. Um, so some people could hold themselves back by kind of thinking, thinking for their team like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny how you thought like, man, this task is so, you know, it's a pain in the ass task yep. or whatever yeah. it is. Like, yep. man, uh, I don't, I like, yes, I have to do it. It has to get done. But like, I, I'm a, like, personally, I'm a big proponent of like, I'm not going to ask somebody to do something that I'm not willing to. Yeah. Yeah. So even if like, yes, things have to get done. But for you, like in that moment of realizing, wow, they're better than me at this. That's, that's huge. That's I think it's a game changer to mm -hmm. see like, okay. I need to let go. I need to learn to let go of some of this pride or some of this control yeah. to say, yeah, okay, let me just get it over with. Let me just put it out there and say, hey, Johnny, hey, Susie, who or whoever, like, I just need you to do this. Let me show you how to do this. And like, oh, okay. And you don't have to tell them, oh, it's a huge pain in my butt or anything. You can just say, hey, this is how it goes. <laughs> this is how it works. Oh, okay, great. That's awesome. Great. I can do that. No problem. Sure, I can yeah. do that every week for you. Right. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's really how you come across and how you yeah. communicate with people on that too. That's you know, there's a lot of big pieces that are intertwined with delegation. It's you know, the communication side of things, it's holding mm -hmm. them accountable, it's even being tactful in your language and mm -hmm. in that accountability piece. Um and a, per, a good example is having your list of the good and bad, essentially, like a wins tracker and a pains tracker. Like, mm -hmm. say, for example, yeah. you show somebody how to do a certain task. And you're like, hey, I, like I made you a video. I made you training. We got one on one time. We went over. You know, we spent hours going through this and you've done it once or twice. You're just following up, seeing how they're doing it. And you're like, great, like, I love how you're doing it, X, Y, Z, you know, write that down as a win. And then write down, oh, well, there's one thing either misspelled or done just a little bit incorrectly needs to be yeah. tweaked. You know, you don't have to attack that person and say, hey, you're messing up here. What's going on? Like, <laughs> there's no need for that. It's an easy conversation. And, but some people don't see it that way, too. Yeah. Some people, you know, are afraid to hurt somebody's feelings or afraid to just, you know, talk to them and be direct, but in a good, nice, you know, tactful way and say, hey, these are some great wins that we've, you've had here on these, this particular item. Yeah. You know, but hey, by the way, there's this one thing I noticed. Can we just tweak that and fix it, you know, going forward? Yeah, sure. Yeah. No problem. We can, we can manage that, you know. So it's, it's that piece of delegation to the, the follow-up on the back end of holding them accountable and not being an a-hole about it, you know, yeah. just bringing it up and saying, hey, if there is a problem, let's nip it in the bud, but also showing them why that's a problem and giving them that future outlook on it too. I call it, you know, a lot of times dangling a carrot, like, hey, if we can get this done right, then this is going to happen. This is going to be yeah. the outcome in the end. And this is how it benefits you. This is how it benefits me and the whole team and the whole organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a leadership thing, you know, um, and as business owners, we can get emotional and we can make the small things turn into big things. So we delegate something, we show them, they make a mistake, we blow up, we take it back from them. You know, 
or we give it to somebody else because I made one mistake. You know, um, that's not a very good leader um, at all. You know, the communication portion is so important. Um, it, you know, in, in communicating, especially a new process given to someone. You know, when was the last thing that you were giving something new and you didn't make a mistake? You know, I'm sure when you did that the first couple of times, you made some mistakes. So, what should we expect mm -hmm. of our employees? Right. Um, you know, and and uh, you know what? And you know, we've been doing it forever. It could be something we've been doing for a while that it's just easy to us now. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't realize, hey, this is new and fresh for somebody else. But I think what it does, it's almost like a transfer of, and I'm not talking like ownership per se, but it's like a transfer of ownership over that process. It's like, hey, you know, and, and most employees, they good employees, they want more opportunity like that. You know, what yep. they don't want is you to pile more tasks on than what you they already have and you don't pay them more, right? Like, don't do that, right? But if there's something that they can help out with that fits within their job description, or, you know, if it's something you give them, you know, reward them in some way, um, you know, but... But uh, like they're the owners of that process now, so you guys have meetings of just seeing how that's going, and they'll probably say, "Hey, this is a you know, this isn't." They, they might even be upright and forthcoming, and say, "Hey, this isn't going too well. I made a couple mistakes here." You guys talk through that, not a, a I'm going to boss you through it and Absolutely. make you feel like crap um, for mm -hmm. not doing it right. Yeah, having those uh, those meeting times, I'm a huge proponent on. Like, hey, let's let's have a weekly meeting, even if it's for. 15, 30 minutes. Let's just touch base. Make sure everything's going well. Because as a business owner, I want to know like my head of sales, my head of marketing, my even if it's just the one sales team member, I want to make sure that he or she is really like good. Like, hey, what's going well for you this week? What's not going well? How can I help you? How can I support you? You have all these tasks that you're managing and you're running. Yeah. You know, are you good there? Cool. Okay. Well, I have something else I want to add and take it off of, and, and in your mind, you're thinking, Hey, I got to take this off my plate, put it on yours, make sure it can work. There. Make sure you have the time and the capacity to do so. So outline say, okay, great. I have, you've, you're doing really well here. I have another thing for you. Awesome. Get to work on that and keep that leadership piece that you mm -hmm. mentioned. Following up, you know, not really micromanaging because I like to give people that freedom and space to work. Um, and not bog them down and just have clear communications with them. That really helps with delegating those tasks. Yeah, I think follow-up is so important. It's something I kind of forget about when you de hit delegate. You kind of just lump it in with like manager reviews or, you know, some sort of review during the year. But really it is, it might require more follow-up than just the quarterly review. It might be weekly, daily. Um, based on what the task is. So I think that's a huge thing to emphasize there. It is, you know, one tip that I have uh, recently learned myself and for other business owners is uh, after delegating the task. And one thing I'd like to go back to in our conversation are maybe some items to, to actually delegate, like break that yeah. down a little bit more. Yeah. Yep. But one thing as an owner and that boss is in order to, not come across as like, hey, I'm micromanaging you is to like every Monday morning, set that that block of time out for like your weekly prep and say, OK, this is what I have going on. This is everything, my meetings, our production, our sales schedules, whatever your industry is. Just take those few hours on Monday morning of kind of your own quiet time. Don't schedule any meetings and calls. But during that time, if you have new tasks that you've just started delegating, or anything that you just see that you want follow up on, schedule those emails. You know, pretty much every email client now has a schedule feature. And if and if yours doesn't, then just go to Gmail. Get get a Gmail account. Switch it. <laughs> get, 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 get up to times. Get a Gmail account. Okay. Right. <laughs> Microsoft is a great email hosting client. Google's a great email hosting client. You can schedule emails. So you know, if you have ten people or two people. Just sit there, make a template, schedule emails, put that task name and item in there and say, okay, I see on our calendar, this is going to be done on Wednesday at three o'clock. Okay, well, let me send an email out either Thursday morning, first thing, or yeah. Wednesday at four o'clock, just to follow up, see how everything went for that task, see if they need any support there. Right. Little things like that. And then now your time today that you just did that on that Monday morning, 
you're good for the rest of the week on yeah. that particular item. You don't have to worry about that. You can go work on something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's the communication with inside, you know, in, inside of that is um, not, hey, how is it going? But like, hey, how can I, like, is there anything I can help you with? Is there, mm-hmm. you know, you make it so like you take it off the, perf- like the, their performance and you put it on like, hey, how can I help you, you know, um, through this? Because they might, like I said, they might say, hey, like I had an issue here. They might bring it up, you know, right then and there. And it's just, it, it's a slight difference, but it, it it's enough of a difference to show um, that, hey, I'm not just checking in on your performance, but I'm checking in because I value you. And I, 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 if there's anything I can help you with, if you have questions, anything like that, and scheduling that time um, with them. And I want to go back to something Dan said um, about follow-up, you know, and I think some of the best companies are doing this right now. And not just large companies, but small is they're getting away from this. Hey, let's have a yearly review. And that's the only time I give feedback and follow up. It's become part of their culture where I make it a point as the leader to go move within the organization and talk to people. Mm. Like just talk to them, see how their life is going. And that I guarantee you that will parlay into some business stuff too. You know, like, right. um, you know, you can take that conversation because like they want to know they're cared for and then they're, they're going to open up and tell you, Hey, you know, this happened or, Hey, I'm struggling here, or, uh, wherever else, you know? So it's not just, Hey, this one time a year, that's such old, old uh if you're still doing that knock it off stop it (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know yeah get the Um, get the weekly get the monthly get the team meetings going like it makes such a big difference especially on the delegation piece because if if you're spinning around handling everything yourself and your team you don't really know and keeping track of your team that's a that's that can nip a lot of things in the bud right there just having those weekly touch points yep so let's talk a little bit about, you know, um, like what are some things that we can delegate? Where should someone start? Okay, maybe they've been a bad delegator and they're they're, uh, they're like, hey, I, I really struggle with de- delegating. What are some things that they, what are some questions? What are some things that they can start focusing on to start delegating? May, maybe some of the more trivial things that they don't want to do or don't like to do. Yep. I, I think uh, that the first thing to be aware of going into delegation is your initial time commitment. So to touch kind of on this point, um, there's a great book called uh, Procrastinate on Purpose, I believe the title is, by Rory Baden. don't know if either of you guys heard of this book, but it talks about oh. Time management, multiplying your time. They touch on the delegation piece. They touch on a lot of other topics. Uh, So one nugget I got from that book that I wanted to share to kind of get our mindset going into delegation is you should really consider the 30x rule. So 30x rule is is, is 30 times the amount of whatever that task takes you it's going to take you to train somebody else to do so if it takes you five minutes to do that task you should you know be expecting it's going to take you like 150 minutes to train somebody to do that task Mm -hmm. that's kind of tying in that urgency piece that of that world we live in now of like got to get things done or it takes me five minutes i'll just do that no big deal i'm why would i train somebody for an hour and a half to do this task so but again looking into the future there. So, and, and with that, you, like if it's a five minute task, an hour long task, whatever it is, kind of that first initial step to get started in it is figuring out what task you should delegate, yeah. which that's to me and what I've seen and what I've dealt with. And I love to hear you guys feedback on it too. Is that's pretty much the, the for me, that's the hardest part is figuring yeah. out what, what should I delegate? Um, and that initial time that you need to put into it is like really just listing it all out, saying, okay, this is what I do on a day-to-day basis, or this is what I do on a monthly, weekly yeah. basis. And then funneling them into like a, a system or a, a thought process of, how important, how urgent, how significant are these tasks? Yep. You know, and really to break that down a little bit is the important piece of it is, you know, 
of course, how much something matter. The urgency is how soon does something matter? And the yep. significance is how long does it matter? So you really have to, with that mindset of creating these tasks, take those all into consideration yeah. and allow yourself, uh, and this, I'm gonna quote this from Roy Vaden here, is to multiply your time by giving yourself emotional permission to spend time on things that, uh, to spend time on things today that will give you more time tomorrow. Yeah. So <clears throat> with that kind of mindset and figuring out those tasks, what makes sense to delegate, mm. what doesn't make sense to delegate, uh, is starting out with that list and, and using like a funnel of, of, and the thought process of, you're gonna go through each one and okay, you're writing these tasks down, you're making your list and you're like, okay, what well, does this one really need to be done or can I just eliminate it? Or can I automate it? Or should I delegate it? Yeah. Like breaking it down that way. Yep. And that's, you can look at the automation process and you can see, oh man, this one, like the emails, for example, I can automate yep. follow-up emails throughout the whole week, throughout the whole month if I want to. Um, and then look at your other items. Oh, this this has got to be done, or this this sales call has to be done. All right. Well, let me get with my sales team and delegate it to them. And make yeah. sure they have the information; they can take that over. So I think that's a good kind of starting point with understanding, not just like okay, I have this item. Let me t tell so and so how to do it and let them do it. Is really thinking a little bit deeper. Yeah. And with the long term in mind, with those you know, items, you know, free delegation items, I guess. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and that's just, that's just part of understanding your time. You know, like you, you have to understand, you know, what is taking my time and then, Hey, is this something that I can dish off to someone else? Maybe like, you know, like in Dan's case, I don't enjoy doing this. Right. Am I, I was really just that, say that. Like, am I really that great at it? Or should I tr like, what if it's just trying someone else doing it? Right. That, that could be a possibility to and be upfront with them. Hey, I'm thinking about moving on from this. I'm going to try it. You're going to be my guinea pig. You know, let's do this experiment together type of deal. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but it's understanding time. It's, it's um, like CJ urgency. The things that are important is it something is like mission critical. You know, is it like, mm -hmm. Hey, like we can't mess this up. Like I can't mess my uh, taxes up. So I'm going to dish that off to our finance person, you know, right, like, right. or, you know, I know it, or you, maybe you don't want, you know, certain employees knowing about certain, uh, you know, cash flow type deals. Um, okay. That's something that you might have to take, but you know, yeah. understanding what's mission critical, what's information sensitive, what's the urgency, um, on it. Do you even enjoy doing it? Um, and, and, but you have to understand your time by writing everything you do down. And then I would say, you know, even with to, to piggyback on CJ's, which if you're not like, you need to go back and listen to what CJ said, because he like just gave you the step-by-step -step of what you need to do to understand your time and understand what things to delegate. So yeah. listen to that a couple of times, but, um, you know, we would write a lot of SOPs. So like, um, we would understand, uh, okay, this is something that is a time, like we have to do this every single day. It's taking us an hour every single day. Okay. So I can free up, you know, five hours of my week. Maybe I can replace that hour that I'm doing this with some created like creation time where I can actually sit, think what you should do every day, sit, think, and think about the direction of the organization, direction of the business. Um, but before you dish it off, try to go through it and write down a process uh, of, of how you do it. So you have some documentation not that they have to do it. I, I would give the SOPs to employees say, hey, if you have a better way or you can cut a step out, do it. This is just how I do it. It's not the best way. It may not be the best way. You might be able to find a better way. You know. Yep. Um, and a lot of times they did. They say, hey, step two, I took that out. It was just a waste of time. Great. Right. You know. One yeah, thing that well, might help too is um is is once you list out your day, like you said, you go through and you categorize it. Um, you know, one of the seven business parts, or I think it's seven. But like HR, sales, marketing, technology, customer service, whatever else you guys have in there, um, if you categorize it, and then what you could do is if it's something you don't want to do or you want to start delegating, then you could take that and be like, okay, this is this is part of hiring. So this is probably going to go to HR. 
um, then you can give it to the right team. They're not going to complain about it being like an additional task where they're going to look for additional money yeah. and or title change. Um, so then you could give it to the right people. Assuming you have the right people in the right chairs, you should have a really good delegation system. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and what to both of your points, like taking that SOP and leaning on, on the people on your team, really getting that trust. And that's even kind of a test. If you don't trust somebody or you don't really know their capabilities fully or you're not confident in it, give them that task. See just how they do it yeah. and coach them through it, too, if, if they need it. They might take it and run with it and tweak it, like you said, Andrew, and, and change it and make yep. it even better for the whole organization. Um, you know, and, and I, I think a good example task that I wanted to share, too, was invoicing like with salespeople and sales teams, managers, even if you're a small team, invoicing is one of those that as owners, we like to be in control of the numbers a lot of times. And I mm -hmm. see a lot that like, if you have a sales manager or account manager or just a team member, they're gonna go through you to send out and handle an invoice. Yep. There's no need for that. You can set up, whether it's through QuickBooks or Xero, or however you want to, you can set them up as just a, a basic user. They yep. won't see your financials. They won't see everything, but they can at least create an invoice because that's one big time suck that I see a lot is, you know, so-and-so uh, -so will email your, your manager or you and say, hey, I just got this quote approved or I got everything done. Can you send the estimate or um, the invoice over to them? Like they're just doing double the work. They're making work yeah. for you as the owners. You know, whether it takes five minutes or 15 minutes to create and send that invoice, whatever they're putting in that email, they should just be putting into the system and send it right out. So <laughs> if, if, you're, if you're out there and you're handling all that as a business owner, really look into that and just giving that trust that like, yeah, they know how to make a quote, get it approved. And yeah. okay, on the accounting side, they just need to send the invoice. Well, if you have your bookkeeper doing that, probably paying too much and you can have you can you can have somebody else in your team member just take over that for you that's a yep. good uh, example of a task that you can delegate yeah yep. and i love what obviously dan and i were and i know cj has done automation stuff too we love automation it's like we can't automate mm -hmm. everything right? right but even with that right there maybe you're you need to invest into a system to and that investment into a system will allow you to save time on your behalf of not having to do invoices and allows your team to do it, so on and so forth. So, you know, it, this is, and as a business owner, you're constantly needing to evaluate. And this is the part that goes back to being the leader of the organization. And, you know, you're the guy in the front of the pack, like you're in the jungle with the machete, you know, you're carving <laughs> the path for people. And a lot of people, they drop that. They just say, we're just going to set up camp right here and we're going to live here. Um, you know, but, you know, you need to say, hey guys, there's treasure in the middle of this jungle. And you're the guy with the machete, you know, keeping the, 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 the camp, the people behind you healthy, uh, leading the way, you know, so you need to create time that, that takes time to think through certain things. Okay. Where, where are we not efficient at? What can I delegate? What can we automate? What systems should, do we have the best systems? Maybe this new system will cost $500 more a month, but it'll save each person 10 hours of time. Well, yeah, you paid yeah. for it, you know, so you gotta be, you, but if you don't create time through delegating to think through that stuff, you won't evolve as a business in an organization. You will stay where you're at, you know? Um, so, and that's why, it, you know, I, I know I'm super passionate about this. Um, yeah. You know, so. You, you have to, because, you know, unfortunately there's, there's not 32 hours in a day. I say that all the time. If there was, man, we would all be <laughs> kicking even more butt out there. Like, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, one thing I'll say with your analogy with the machete and your team is, and even going back to the point with your SOP example that you mentioned is before you can really truly delegate, you have to have outlined your roles and responsibilities, mm. whether it's just you and, and one other person or your partner or you and two people, five people, 10 people. If you don't have those roles and responsibilities and those job descriptions and, and kind of that company org chart written out, you're just going to have no idea where to delegate, where to take your task. You've mapped it out. You know, okay, it's going to take time to invest to get these going and to get these delegated. Now, who do I delegate it to? Yep. So I really think that you have to have those roles, 
responsibilities of job description outlined so you can make sure they're going to the right people. It, yep. It, it's funny because there's some, there's some, and I think this is more of a new age thing, which I can 100% completely disagree with is that, Hey, everyone does everything. Like we don't have job duties or titles. It's like, what are you talking about? Well, like for real, I, and they think it's, it, it's creates some utopia BS. Uh, it's kind of social. Like to me, it's very socialistic. You know, it's like, what are you talking about? Everyone does everything. Like you, you need job duties. You need job titles. Um, you know, if you don't want the, hmm. you know, it, it's, it's kind of weird. I've seen it out there in a couple of groups. Um, like, Hey, we just I got rid of all our job titles and duties. I'm like, what are you talking about? And it's all, it's all on the basis of, of course, feelings. Like, well, we don't want right. one person to feel like they're not as important as the next. It's like, hey, I'm sorry. No one could be offended. But the president is, might be a little bit more important than the janitor. I, I'm sorry. Like, that's just, you know, right. not, not, as, not in their human value. Like, their human value obviously is not more important. But to that organization, yeah, you know. Um, so I think that's where people get jobs. And it's like, you know, not one more person is more important, like, as a human, but in this right. organization, yeah, you know, our top salesperson, pretty freaking valuable. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> there's reason they have insurance for like the key person insurance in your business. Yeah. Yeah. It's wacky thinking, but Hey, that's the times. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. You guys have anything else? CJ, you have anything else? It's been a gold mine. I'm, I'm learning stuff. I didn't know the 30 times rule. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's, that's rule? something. Yeah, that's something new I've learned as well. Um, I really highly suggest that uh, that wow. book I mentioned by Rory Vade. He, he has a bunch of great nuggets. Um, that's not where like I got all of what I was talking about today, but that thirty times rule came from that book, and uh, super helpful. He uh, he really explains time really well because yeah. he's like, yeah, we can't just come up with new time. We can't create time. We have to manage our time, multiply our time. How do mm -hmm. we do that? He really breaks it down and, and points out the power of procrastinating, which, you know, that's always frowned upon. Like, oh, you procrastinate. Oh, you wait till last minute to do that. Well, that's not what he talks about in yeah. the book. But uh, yeah, a lot of good nuggets there from him. And then I'll, I'll just kind of leave it as, yeah, delegating. Go into it with that mindset that we talked about here. Uh, understanding what it's going to take to actually delegate tasks, knowing which tasks that make sense to delegate and uh, communicate with your team. Dan, I know you always have some parting wisdom too. Uh, hey, I would just say as a business owner, drop the addiction to be busy and start to let your team make mistakes. You guys are awesome. Like, and this is what I, I mean. I, I love, I mean, these two guys right here, they're just like, like, I learn almost daily from them, um, you know, and you guys can see why we brought CJ into it's, I mean, uh, compliments, everything. I'm well. always so learning too. I know yeah, it's amazing. We're, we're always students. And that's, that's why I love the synergy us three have that we bring to the table. We, we want to learn and we want to teach too. We want to say, yep. Hey, this is what we got. This is what we've actually done. We've tried it in our business. We've tried it for our clients. Yeah. We want to help the masses, you know, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah. And I and there's it. some changes happening with with uh Limitless and we have launching a, a new group. It's really was our paid group, but we're changing the name of it. It's going to be a whole different. We're bringing CJ in. CJ is going to be one of the owners of that. And uh, it's going to be us three teaching in that group. But alongside Limitless business owners, we're launching, well, we kind of already launched it. We just weren't very vocal about it. Launching a free Facebook group for you guys to hop in. CJ is doing some videos in there. We're doing some videos in there uh, weekly and and uh, so if you're a business owner that wants to learn even more past the podcast, hop in that free group. Um, you know, you can ask us questions in there. And then we have a new group called Appear on Order. And this group is for the elite business owners that want even more. It's, it's, it's a mastermind. It's a networking. Um, we're going to have a networking platform in there. Um, and we just go deeper, right? Yep. Um, so we're going to have structured, you know, structured, um, probably Better processes, I would say, you know, like delegation, like th this podcast, like we would have it written out exactly what you need to do. You can ask questions, uh, so on and so forth. Super valuable. Um, so that'll be launching here shortly. And uh, I know we're pumped about it. Thank you. So.
Hey, if you haven't rated or reviewed the show yet, please take two to three minutes to do so right now on whatever platform you listen on. It really helps the show rank better when people are searching for new podcasts to listen to. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook where we post daily clips from the episode. And then we're just going to ask you to share those clips, right? You never know who of your friend, friends are going to see that clip and then they're going to start listening to the episode and then their life changes because they hear something that really helps them overcome uh, a challenge that they're experiencing in their business. Um, it's really going to help them create breakthrough in their business and become limitless. Also, one last thing. Right now, we are offering a free seven-day trial into our Inner Circle group, Limitless Business Owners Inner Circle. And inside this elite group, you get to learn how you can experience immense, consistent growth inside your business where you learn the strategies and tactics to grow your business, Right, surround yourself with like-minded people, other business owners that are experiencing what you're experiencing that are going through it right now that you can build key relationships relationships with and learn from. And also some people ahead of you that can also teach you something that's going to help you overcome something in your business right now. And then last thing, you can leverage the strategies and tactics it takes to build your dreams and fulfill your purpose. Talk soon.